12 weeks ago it looked like this so I decided it was well overdue a cutting phase and 12 weeks on this is the result so in this video I'm going to go through everything I've done and everything I think you should probably do if you want to get shredded. What's happening and welcome back to another video. This one is going to be a full in-depth guide to getting shredded but see before we start talking about how you can do that I want to clear a few things up because getting shredded isn't necessary for most people. It's not sustainable. It's actually not healthy. You're actually probably better off having a higher level of body fat. If you're a lad watching this it's probably not going to get you any more girls and it's certainly not going to make you happy if you're unhappy. So Getting shredded is basically just to look good and it also primes you to build muscle. So make sure if you're watching this video, you're not thinking, oh, I need to get shredded to be happy or I need a six pack if I wanna get girls. Like, that's not how it is at all. There is good things about getting shredded. Like, if you're at a really low level of body fat, you're basically primed to build muscle and start to gradually build your calories up. So it isn't something that you should strive to be if you're not getting to it for the right reasons, if that makes sense. So if you're just looking to get shredded because you think once you have a six pack, you're gonna be happy, or that's gonna sort out all your life problems, like it genuinely isn't, you should only want to get shredded because you like the mental challenge of cutting down the low level of body fat. It's something that you genuinely want to do. And then once you get shredded, you can start to gradually build up your calories and build some muscle it shouldn't be something that you aim to maintain all year round because that's just completely unhealthy so basically if you're going to do this make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons it certainly isn't for everyone it's not sustainable and if you're just a normal person that's not really into that gym that much it's probably not for you right so now we've cleared that up i feel like that was sort of like the terms and conditions you know when you like listen to an advert and then it has all the fast talking at the end but i thought it was really important to make that clear at the start of the video because a lot of my content is just for helping people lose fat and if you're just a normal person that wants to lose fat getting absolutely shredded like there's a lot more that goes into it and i'm going to talk about it in this video like lots lots of more things lots more things that doesn't even make sense my english is awful sometimes but lots of different things that you need to take into account and lots more sacrifices that you have to make compared to just losing fat but we're going to cover that also before we bounce into it if you're hot not uh, can't even talk if you're not subscribed already it wouldn't be a video if i didn't fumble words it would, uh, at least once if you're not subscribed already hit subscribe hit the like button all that good stuff and just before we bounce into it as well if you're interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one directly starting now sort of before summer i'm going to take people on and help them lose lots of fat and get in the shape of their life all that good stuff so obviously in my content i tell people how to do everything for free and like that's just the way i like doing it but if you are interested in working with me directly for a more personalized approach and a bit of accountability there's a link in the bio to apply for online coaching and you can do that and that's sweet so let's jump into it. the actual fundamentals behind getting shredded are pretty simple you need to be in a calorie deficit in order to lose fat you need to be a plan progressive overload to your training and eating enough protein to make sure you're maintaining or even gaining muscle while you're losing fat in order to get that shredded physique but where it gets tricky is actually being able to stick to it because while a normal person person can lose fat with a calorie deficit and just basically concentrate on eating in a deficit make good food decisions it becomes a lot harder when you're trying to get shredded because you have to cut your calories down lower you have less energy and when you're getting that last bit of fat off your body basically doesn't want to let go of it so just eating in a calorie deficit without paying attention to anything else you're probably going to fail so there's lots of different tips and tricks in terms of your nutrition your rest recovery your training i'm going to cover everything that you need to know here so let's jump into it we're going to start with training Right, so the first thing that's important to point out in terms of training is whether you're cutting or bulking, your training should still stay the same. Like you're still doing resistance training, you're still doing the same sorts of rep ranges. Like a lot of people when they're shredding or cutting, they're all like, oh, I need to do high reps and like really low weight in order to tone the muscle. That's just complete bullshit. Whether you're cutting or you're bulking, your rep ranges stay the same. Like you should still have a very rep range. You know, you have your sort of three to six, you have your eight to 12, right up to 15. Like it doesn't switch to all, uh, all high reps, low weight when you're cutting training stays the same so that's the most important thing to uh, to point out like there isn't even any change at all in terms of your training like your training program whether you're cutting or bulking exactly the same so the main difference between a cut and a bulk with your training is you're going to be a lot less strong and you're going to have a lot less energy when you're cutting this is because you don't have as much calories as you're used to it's going to be harder to build muscle it's going to be harder to get stronger but the most important thing to remember is you still want to be a planned progressive overload now when most people think about progressive overload they think about adding more weight and this might be quite easy to do when you're in a surplus but when you're in a deficit and especially when you get to the end stage of your deficit when you're trying to get that last bit of fat off add more weight every time just isn't possible so there's lots of different ways that you can progressively overload you can add more reps you can add more sets you can reduce the rest time or you can increase the time under tension so as well as that 
if you can add more weight while you're cutting and you have the energy to do that that's completely fine but the most important thing to remember is just because you're not adding more weight because you don't have the strength to do it while you're cutting doesn't mean that you can't progressively overload in other ways so the main thing that i would recommend uh, when you're training is keep a training log record what you were doing last time and always try and do one more even if you're just adding an extra rep an extra set reducing the rest time by literally 10 20 seconds make sure that you're still progressively overloading even if you don't have the energy to get stronger and even if you're not lifting more weight so yeah that's all i have to say in terms of progressive overload there's more than one way to do it in terms of in, instead of just adding more weight so find a way keep a training log and make sure you're always doing one better than what you've done before right so next in terms of training is your rest and recovery and what you'll find is when you're on lower calories is your body gets fucked a lot quicker basically and you'll need a lot more rest and recovery well you won't need more but you'll just need to prioritize rest and recovery more you always want to have 48 hours rest in between training the same muscle group that always stays the same but you need to guarantee that you're getting that while you're cutting as well as that i want to touch on deload week so a deload week is basically when you take a week off training completely now some people when they're doing their deload week they'll just go into the gym and they'll lift lighter weights i think that that is stupid if you're taking a deload week you should just take a week off completely so it's important to listen to your body while you're cutting and you might need a deload week quicker than you would when you're bulking so I take a deload week maybe sort of every 8 to 12 weeks when I'm bulking but every sort of 6 weeks when I'm on a cut I just find because my body is like fuck I actually need a deload here so say for example at the minute I'm on a deload week and I just do absolutely no training at all so what's important to remember while you're cutting and you're training that you listen to your body you might need a deload quicker than you will when you're bulking if that makes sense so a lot of the time you can have deloads programmed in so you can say like on week 8 I'm going to take a deload but I would say it's important to listen to your body and even if you don't have a deload programmed don't be afraid to take one because your muscles actually repair and grow when they're recovering so if you're always hammering it and your body is completely fucked you're actually not going to grow so don't be afraid to take a deload week maybe even five, every five to six weeks you're not going to lose muscle mass and if anything it's going to have added benefit right so next up i want to talk about cardio because a lot of people will just try and hammer themselves with cardio now the most simple way to put this is if you want to look like someone that does loads of cardio then do loads of cardio and if you want to look like someone that lifts weights then lift weights obviously you can still use cardio and it's still extremely beneficial and i will never tell anyone not to do cardio because it's amazing for your heart health your cardiovascular health but in terms of getting shredded and looking good you only want to be doing sort of two to three cardio sessions per week you don't want to be absolutely hammering yourself with cardio because what that's going to do is actually eat into your like rest and recovery for your weight training sessions your weight training sessions and actually affect your performance in the gym so if you're doing cardio i would limit it to two limit it can't even talk here i would limit it limit why can i not say the word limit i would limit your cardio sessions to two or three max per week because as i said before if you want to look like a runner then run if you want to look like someone that lifts weights then lift weights i used to hate when people said that because i was like oh you can do both like yes you can definitely do both but you need your priority your priorities need to be with lifting weights cardio i would recommend sort of two to three low intensity steady state you can do high intensity interval training as well but what you need to realize as well is it can really affect your recovery especially if you're doing like squats and like burpees and all and then you're trying to go into the gym and train legs or train chest the next day it's going to affect your recovery so if you're doing cardio what i'd recommend is two to three low intensity steady state don't be absolutely hammering yourself for cardio because it just won't work out in the long run like I'm not recommending this at all, but during my most recent cut, I didn't do any cardio. The only thing that I did was steps. I went for a walk every day, and then at the latter stages of my cut, I went for two walks a day, hitting like 15,000 steps. I don't know cardio. Again, the reason that I don't know cardio is because I literally couldn't be fucked. Like, my treadmill's broken. I didn't want to go out running on the roads, and obviously the gyms aren't open at the minute, so I didn't have any cardio machines. So I just didn't enjoy it, and I didn't have to do it to get shredded. So you definitely don't have to do cardio. You should still do it for your general health if you want to, but your priorities should be on lifting weights and i would probably avoid high intensity interval training but don't take my word as gospel everything that i say in this video is just my own personal opinion so if you want to do lots of cardio you can but i just think you'll get better results you probably heard someone slam the door there i'm not even restarting this you'll probably get better results if you only do cardio two to three times a week and do low intensity steady state right so to sum up training whether you're cutting or bulking your training should still stay the same while you're trying to shred it might be harder to progressively overload so you'll need to get creative add more reps sets time under tension or reduce the rest time instead of always add more weight you really need to prioritize your rest and recovery and you might need to take a deload week more often and then with cardio you want to limit it to two or three low intensity steady state cardio sessions per week and that is you sweet 
Right, so now let's talk about nutrition. I'm actually buzzing to talk about this part because in terms of shredding, you need to be in a calorie deficit and you need to keep your protein high. It's as simple as that. But there's so many different little things that I've discovered in this most recent shred that I do that are really important as well as doing that. Like if you're not in a calorie deficit and if you don't keep your protein high, you're not gonna get good results. But in terms of actually being able to stick to that deficit and give you energy while you're in it, there's loads of different things that I wanna cover here that are gonna be really helpful if you're struggling to stick to the deficit. And especially as you get down to the lower calories, people People do tend to struggle a lot and that's when people give up when they get to that last lap, bit lap that last bit of body fat that they can't give up and that their body doesn't want to give up and then they end up being like oh fuck this so there's a few different tips and techniques here that i'm going to show that are going to make the process like 10 times easier right so first up i want to talk about your starting calories because when lots of people are shredding they start their calories way too low and basically just fuck themselves over so say your maintenance is 3,000 calories i would recommend starting at about 2,700. eventually your body will adapt to them calories and then you drop them down from there Far too many people drop their calories down really low straight away and then their body adapts and they have nowhere to go. So start start them, what I'm trying to say here, start them as high as you can get away with because metabolic adaptation will occur. And if you haven't watched my video on that, definitely go watch it. I think it was my most recent upload or else the one before that where I talk about how your body adapts to the calories that you're on. So you don't want to start them really low because your body will eventually adapt. So start them about 300 below uh, maintenance. That'll last for like maybe a week or two and then drop them down and then drop them down because you don't want to use use all your tools in one go if that makes sense so say for example if you at the very start of your cut if you cut down to like 2000 calories and your maintenance is 3000 and add in cardio and add in loads of steps straight off the bat and then when your progress stalls and you still have fat you sort of have nowhere to go so what you want to do is firstly start by slightly reducing the calories and then once the weight loss stalls or once fat loss stalls then reduce the calories and then once it stalls again then you can add more steps and if it stalls again then you can add a cardio session and then if it stalls again you can drop the calories down so do one thing at a time don't do everything at once because eventually progress will stall and then you'll have nowhere to go use one tool at a time instead of using all your tools at the same time if that makes sense so now let's talk about protein because i've already said that it needs to be high and the usual recommendation that i give to people is about two grams per kg of body weight but when you're trying to get shredded i would recommend sort of 2.5 to 3 grams of protein per kg of body weight there's no scientific back into this and this is just my own personal opinion but i think you get better results on higher protein and from a satiation standpoint which means how full you actually stay when you're in a deficit protein is the most filling macronutrient so even if that added protein isn't having any benefit in terms of building muscle it's going to have benefit in terms of keeping you full what's important to remember is fat is an essential macronutrient so you need to make sure you're getting a minimum of about 0.6 grams per kg of body weight but as long as you're getting that 2.5 to 3 grams of protein per kg of body weight i find that you'll get better results and if nothing else it'll make you less hungry while you're in that deficit right so now let's talk about your fats and carbs and this is all my personal opinion if you look at the studies in terms of fat loss it shows that no matter how much fats or carbs you have as long as protein and calories are equated it literally makes zero difference at all but what i would say is i would sort of err on the side of more carbs especially if you're used to eating a higher carb diet because that's your body's preferred source of energy it's what's going to fuel you through your workout so again this is my own personal opinion and if you want to lose or if you want to eat more fat you can and the results will basically be the same but in terms of giving your body the correct energy that it needs to fuel you through your workouts i would recommend eating a higher carb so what i'd recommend doing is eating your 2.5 to 3 grams uh, of protein per kg of body weight and then eating 0.6 grams uh, per kg of body weight of fat and then filling the rest up with carbs i think that that's the optimal split but again this is my own personal opinion i'm not saying this is fact if you want to eat more fat and you feel better eating more fat that's completely fine but i just wanted to give you my sort of preferred macro split when i'm cutting right so now i want to sort of go into uh, carb timing so this is something that i paid absolutely no attention to at all when i had higher calories but see once you get the low calories you'll find that your energy is really low for your workouts and you're really struggling so what i find best to do is if you can load up on like a load of carbs prior to your workout so i was sort of working out at sort of about a twit did i just say sort of twice in the same sentence i was working out at around um 1 p.m or 2 p.m so what i found best was at 11 a.m if i had like a big bowl of oats for some slow release healthy carbs and then about half an hour prior to my workout i would have like an apple and a banana to make sure that i'm getting my carbs in pre-workout to make sure i'm fueled as 
Before, when I was on higher calories, I didn't really have to think about doing that because I always had energy. But once you get to the lower calories, you're gonna struggle with energy. So if you can have your carbs about an hour before your workout and then have some fruit or else some caffeine sort of 20 minutes before your workout, it's gonna help you fuel you through your workout and it means that you're not gonna be really fatigued and you're actually gonna have energy to get through it. Because let's face it, when you're shredding down and you're on really low calories, your body doesn't have as much energy. So if you can prioritize carbs before a workout, it's gonna mean that you're gonna get better workouts and you're gonna get better results. Right, so now I wanna talk about mood planning and I've got my whiteboard and my lovely handwriting here to show you what I mean. So this is the usual times that I'll get hungry at. So 9 a.m., 11 a.m., 2 p.m., 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. It's better while you're shredding if you always eat at the same times because your hunger comes in waves and it's more of a mental thing. So these are the times that I always get hungry at. So I eat at 9, 11, 2, 5 and 8. So no matter what, no matter what I eat, I will always get hungry at these times. So say for example, if I eat at 11 a.m., I won't get hungry again at 2 p.m. But if I eat at 11 and then I eat at 12, even when I'm not hungry, I will still get hungry again at 2 p.m. even though that I've had at 12 because your hunger is more of a mental thing. I think we're done with that for the time being. Your hunger is more of a mental thing. Ignore my dogs barking too. <laughs> your hunger is more of a mental thing so you will always get hungry at the same times. So if you can use this to your advantage and always eat at them same times and not eat outside of your normal feeding windows. Like there's nothing wrong with eating outside of your normal feeding windows. As long as you stick to your calories and hit your protein, you will get the same results. But what I mean is you're going to struggle more with hunger longer and you clear my throat. You're gonna struggle more with hunger if you eat outside of your normal time frames because you're still gonna get hungry even if you eat before. So like as I showed in the example there, if I add a 12 and I don't usually eat a 12, I'll still get hungry at two because I usually eat a two. So I hope that sort of makes sense. It doesn't make a difference in terms of body composition, but it makes a difference in, uh, in terms of actually sticking to your calories because you will get hungry when you normally eat. So you can use this to your advantage and always eat at the same times and you'll be sweet. Right, so another point sort of interlinked into that is having a cut off time for your meals. So what I've done with this cut is stop eating after 8 p.m. Now, I usually eat right up to 10 p.m., but what I found I was doing, say for example, if it was 8 p.m. and I had 700 calories left, I would eat about 500 calories at 8 p.m. and then I would use the remainder 200 calories at 10 p.m. But what I found myself doing is if I was doing that and then I got to 10 p.m. and I was having 200 calories and then I was eating again and then I found like, oh, I'll just have like an extra 50. But if I at the full 700 at 8 p.m. and then didn't eat past that, it would help me stick to my calories better. There's nothing wrong with eating late at night and again if you eat right up to 10 p.m or stop eating at 6 p.m as long as calories and protein are the same it makes zero difference at all but what i'm saying here is if you have a cut off time for your eating it means that you're not allowed to eat past that time you're going to stop getting hungry past that time and you're going to be less likely to over consuming calories so it's actually going to be a lot easier to stick to your calories so what i done is move my last meal from 10 p.m back to 8 p.m it's a bit of a struggle at the start and you're going to be a bit hungry but after a while your body gets used to it now again this is my own personal opinion and you definitely do not have to do this but i find if you may if you move your last meal for, forward or back if you move it uh, if forward to an earlier time it makes it a lot easier to stick to your calories but again you don't have to do that i just find that it's a really useful tip to help you be less hungry and consume more calories in a shorter time frame but again it's not a magic tip it's just going to help you be less hungry if you want to use it right, so the next thing i want to discuss in terms of your nutrition is your actual food choices because if you've watched my other videos in terms of fat loss you know that i recommend a sustainable approach and sort of going with like the 80 20 rule so 80 percent good whole nutritious foods and then 20 percent of the foods that you love but when you're getting shredded and your calories start to go lower and lower and lower it's a lot harder to stick to them so if you're having junk food you're basically wasting your calories now what i would do is sort of go for a 90 10 rule so 90 percent good whole nutritious foods and then 10 percent of the foods that you love this means that you're going to prioritize veg voluminous low calorie high volume foods if you haven't watched my video on volume eating i would highly recommend that you would watch it first because it's going to help you know what foods have high volume and what foods are actually going to help keep you full while you're in a deficit so technically speaking as i keep saying as long as you stick to your calories and hit your protein you're going to achieve your goals and you're going to achieve your physique but in terms of actually being able to stick to the calories while being the least amount of hungry that definitely doesn't make sense but you want to prioritize good whole nutritious foods so i would go for 90 percent good and then 10 percent of the foods that you love so it's still sustainable but what you need to remember as well is fat loss is just a phase so at the minute i'm probably like 95 percent good whole nutritious foods and only five percent in that last bit of my cup 
but I know that after this, I'm gonna start to gradually build up my calories and it's not like I'm gonna have to stick to this to life. So while fat loss should be sustainable, getting actually shredded isn't something that you should be able to sustain because it will end after the eight or the 12 weeks and then you'll build your calories up after that. So you should have that end goal in mind. You're not gonna have to stick to this sorts of food forever, but in terms of sticking to the low calories, it's better if you prioritize the good foods and have less allowance for your bad foods till you get shredded and then you can build your calories up after that and you can have a chocolate bar again, happy days. Right, so to sum up nutrition, start your calories as high as possible and then only take them down when you need to. Use one tool at a time. So sometimes you might take your calories down, other times you might add steps, other times you might add cardio. It's up to you, don't, look, you don't use all your tools at one go. You wanna prioritize your healthy foods. You want your protein to be really high, about 2.5 to three grams per kg of body weight. You wanna have carbs before your workouts to make sure you actually have energy. You wanna eat at the same time every day and you potentially wanna have a cut off uh, before your last meal. But again, everything that I'm saying here is basically irrelevant as long as you stick to your calories and hit your protein. But the point I'm trying to get across is you're gonna make things a lot easier for yourself if you sort of take this advice. So again, I'm not saying that anyone has to take this advice. I'm just saying in terms of getting shredded and sticking to calories, if you use this advice, it will help you massively. Right, so next thing I wanna talk about is supplements. And if you've watched my videos, you'll know that I'm not a big supplement person. Like I take supplements myself, but they're not really that important. So all I'll say is whey protein will help you easily and conveniently meet your protein goals. And it tastes pretty nice too, especially when you're in a cut, that bowl of protein oats or something might be the only nice thing that you're having and it gives you something to look forward to. So whey protein, creatine monohydrate as well. So there's a lot of rumors that people say while you're cutting, you shouldn't take creatine because it holds on to water weight. The water weight that creatine adds to you while you're like, when you take it is water stored in your muscles. So while it will add more weight, it's actually good weight. The goal with uh, cotton isn't to lose weight, it's to lose fat. Weight loss is just a byproduct of that. So you should still definitely take creatine. And that is the only two uh, supplements in terms of muscle development that I will recommend while you're cutting because all the other ones are basically bullshit. If you wanna take pre-workout, you can. I just don't personally take it. You definitely don't need BCAs and you definitely don't need half the supplements that YouTubers tell you that you need. Whey protein, and creatine monohydrate on your sweet. Right, so now I wanna go into a few lifestyle considerations. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is your sleep. You need to be getting seven to nine hours sleep each night. When you don't get enough sleep, your body produces more of a hormone called ghrelin and less of a hormone called leptin. So ghrelin basically tells you that you're full and leptin tells you, no, ghrelin tells you that you're hungry and leptin tells you that you're full and you should stop eating. So when you don't get enough sleep, you produce more ghrelin and less leptin. So you're gonna be more hungry and you're gonna get full less quickly. So it's gonna be a lot harder to stick to your calories. So get seven to nine hours sleep each night as well as this your sleep is like literally the most anabolic thing that you can do your muscles rest recover grow while you're sleeping so you're basically fucking yourself over if you're not getting enough sleep because you're going to be more hungry and your recovery is going to be shit and your muscles aren't going to grow as well so seven to nine hours sleep make sure you're getting it so next sort of mindfulness technique i want to talk about or this is the first mindfulness technique i want to talk about is urge surfing so urge surfing is a really useful tool basically when you're on low calories and you feel the urge to eat something that you know that you shouldn't or you know you're going to go over your calories what you can do is don't tell yourself that you're not going to eat it. Say for example, it's a chocolate bar and you have no calories left to eat that day. Surf on that urge to eat the chocolate bar. Think about it. Now this sounds really stupid and I know it sounds ridiculous, but if you're going to eat a chocolate bar, say it out loud, say I'm about to eat a chocolate bar and I'm going to go over my calories if I eat it. And then wait 20 minutes. Don't tell yourself that you're not going to eat that chocolate bar. Say, I'm going to surf this urge, urge surfing, like it seems like quite a happy thing to do. But just think about it. Think about, make it, say it out loud, make it an actual thing. And then wait 20 minutes and then after 20 minutes if you still want to eat the chocolate bar just have the chocolate bar it's not the end of the world but think about it first surf on the urge because a lot of time when people go over their calories and they eat something that they shouldn't it's because they just they just took it and, and done it and ate it straight away and they didn't even think about it and then after like oh fuck so next time you find yourself like in that situation use urge surfing just to think about what you're about to do say it out loud wait 20 minutes and then if you still want to have it then you can have it but a lot of the time you'll find that after 20 minutes you're like fuck i don't even need it so that is another useful technique. So coming into the last few things here, so I'm not gonna keep you too much longer, but next thing is hydration. So make sure you're eating, eating, you don't eat water, two to three liters of water minimum a day. So this is gonna help keep you full, especially when you're in a deficit. And water, you need water to survive. Like I don't need to sell you the fact that you need to drink water, but it's mostly down to the, the appetite suppression. Like a lot of the time when people aren't drinking enough water, they think they're hungry, but they're actually just thirsty. So two to three liters of water a day minimum. What I find helps is if you fill up like a two liter water bottle at the start of the day, you know that you have to drink that instead of just having glasses. So get a big water bottle filled up at the start of the day and that'll remind you to drink it. So next up is your steps. And I'll touch on this briefly earlier I said how I've literally just walked and didn't do any cardio so 
aim for 10,000 steps each day while you're cutting and then as I said before about using one tool at a time so when your fat loss stalls what you can do is increase your steps especially if you're in really low calories so for example I started my calories on 2800 then dropped to 2600 then 2400 and eventually I was on 2200 and I didn't want to drop my calories any further so what I did instead of dropping calories is just add more steps so started off at 10,000 and then 12,000 and then on the latter stages here I'm at 14,000 so steps are a really useful tool and like especially another thing that people often overlook and this has nothing to do with cutting getting out for a daily walk is amazing for your mental health like I don't know when it is when you're watching this video but at the minute we're still in lockdown a lot of people aren't leaving the house at all so steps are a really useful tool for your mental health and to help you burn calories you can add them in when your weight loss stalls to help you continue to lose fat and get that last bit off so yeah make sure you're getting your steps in and if you don't have a smartwatch definitely recommend getting one of them because it helps you get track and then like say some days if you're I uh, feel like I'm just rambling here because it's near the end of the video. I've been talking for absolutely ages. But say if some days you're looking at your smartwatch and you've only done like 2,000 steps, it actually triggers you and goes like, right, I need to go for a walk here. So I definitely recommend getting a smartwatch, making sure you're getting at least 10,000 steps a day, and then you can add more steps as you get deeper into your cut. Right, so the final thing I want to talk about is your environment. So you can have all the tools in the book. You can know exactly what you need to do. But if your environment's poor, then it's going to be a lot harder to stick to your deficit. So this goes for your friends, your family, anyone that you're around. If they're always eating shite food they're always drinking and they're always doing stuff that you know is going to keep you from your goals you're better changing your environment and being with people who are going to help you achieve your goals now i'm not saying tell all your friends to fuck off because obviously you shouldn't do that and if you're someone that feels like you're at a stage in your life when you just want to enjoy yourself you want to go out and have a drink with your friends that's probably more important than getting shredded but if you want to commit to the goal of getting shredded your environment is massive so watching who you're hanging around with watching what they're doing if you feel like when you're always with these people, they're keeping you back from achieving your goal, then stop hanging around with them so much, at least till you get to the level of body fat that you're happy with. But again, if you feel like you're at a stage in your life where you don't give a fuck about your level of body fat, like, and you just want to hang around with your friends, you want to go out for meals, then do that too. It's about knowing like what you should do and what's right for you. I'm not going to tell anyone to stop hanging around with your friends because they're going out and drinking because that would be pretty fucking stupid. Know that like the whole point of this video, yes, I'm telling you how to get shredded, but is this something that you actually really want to do like deep down or do you think that it's just going to make you happy? Is it worth sacrificing? Like, because there's a lot of sacrifices that you have to make. If you watch my fat loss videos, I tell people that you don't need to sacrifice much to lose fat because you don't really. But in terms of of actually getting shredded you do need to make a bit of sacrifice so it needs to be something that you want deep down and if you want to change your environment you might have to do that to help you get to the lower levels of body fat or at least make it easier for you but i think the whole gist of this video is getting shredded isn't going to make you happy but if it is something that you genuinely want to do then here's the tips and tricks that'll make it a lot easier for you so Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. I think it was quite a long video. I went into detail on all the things that I think are most important. So yeah, let me know in the comments. Drop me a message on Instagram. I'll maybe get back to you. I do have a lot of messages on Instagram. If you did like this video, give it a share, a like, a comment. I would really appreciate it. And if you think that I left something out, I can't, I can't even talk here because I've been talking for so long. But if you think that I left something out too, drop it in the comments. Let me know what you thought. If you thought this was helpful, happy days. And I'll see you in the next video.